PTC Creole Parametric 3.0, Lesson 1, Part 3. In the third portion of this lesson, we're going to create a simple assembly from the two parts that we've already modeled. The assembly mode is very similar to the part mode. They're still called objects. And we're going to start off by creating a new assembly. And this one is, I'm going to call it clamp. one just for a name whatever it says in the book do that's one thing that's very important you're watching the lectures but do not go by the lectures when you create the parts assemblies and drawings use the book commands you'll learn a lot more uh, the lectures we add a little bit of value uh, that the book does not have and the book we add a lot of value that the lectures don't have because the lectures would be way too long now, we're starting off with a part here because I made a mistake while I'm talking. If I just use the default, the part comes up. So I'm going to close that, and I'm going to click on New again. But this time, I'll be a little bit careful. I'm going to call, click on Assembly. And if we go over here, we'll see that we're going to create a model. This one is the Assembly, and it's called Connector. So I gave it the wrong name anyway. So Connector 1. It's the assembly. It's the design subtype. Click on OK. I'm using my use default template. That'll give us, <clears throat> excuse me, the datum planes. And you'll see they're the same as before, but they're all with ASM in front of it. So instead of the top, front, and right, we have ASM, front, etc. Same way with the default coordinate system. Now, the model tree over here, which we really haven't talked about, it doesn't show very much. So we're going to go in here and we're going to click on our settings and our tree filters. And then we're going to turn on all the options here. So just click every one of them and also the auto round number. Turn everything on. Click OK. And now that you see that we have features and the assembly, we don't have any parts yet. So we're going to go up and we're going to click on assemble. And we're going to, I'm going to go in session. You're going to be in your directory, so you'll be okay. And you'll see I have something called clamp one in here. That's because I made a mistake. I really didn't delete it from session, but I never saved it. So it won't go into the folder when I shut off Creo. So <clears throat> the first one that we're going to put in is the plate. You can double click or you can just select open. And it puts it there at a position it thinks is correct. We want to go and we want to make it the default position, which will make the coordinate system of the part line up with the coordinate system of the assembly. So once we've done that, click on check. You can see it says fully constrained. That means that there's no movement allowed in any of the three directions because it's locked into the coordinate system. So it won't be able to have a, another constraint applied to it or doesn't need it. <clears throat> I'm going to hit control D on my keyboard just to center it. And it's a little hard to see because the datum planes are actually over the top of each other. And if we go in and we expand the part, we can see that that's in the model tree now. That's one reason why you definitely want to always turn on features and this, these other items. So for instance, the placement and the set you can see we use default for that particular constraint so that's the first one already in there <clears throat> we started our assembly let's assemble the second one which is of course the pin and we've got the 3d dragger you can actually put your cursor there and you can move it around with your left mouse button you can actually use your middle mouse button and it'll turn everything on the screen you can also turn things with um, these the 3D dragger, the different colored orbits here. Now, for our purposes, what we want to do is we want to make it simpler to look at. So let's go up here and click on Select All to turn everything off. So we're going to turn off our axis point, all of our, in, all of our items here, like the datum plane display. And when they go off, they'll also have, the tags will go off. So, for instance, if we go over here, you'll see that 
these are off here in the under the view tab, but they're not off here. But this temporarily shut everything off for us. So I'm going to go back out to model and <clears throat> component placement, make sure I pick on that. And if I open up my placement, I can see what's going on. If I don't open that up, I can just keep clicking. So for instance, I can select this surface of the pin and it's going to go into the surface of the hole, left mouse button. Now, I can go over and I can select on this arrow and I can move it in and out. I'm going to move it so it's sort of like that. Now, right mouse button, I want a new constraint or I can go placement new constraint. And in general, as long as you haven't opened up your placement tab here, you can just keep clicking. So I could have just clicked and it would have automatically gone to a new constraint. But now that this is open, I've got to select new constraint. And I'm going to click on this front face. And I'm going to click on the face of the pin. Now I put it back down in so it's coincident. If I put my right mouse button on there, you'll see all the choices. But I don't want it to be coincident. I want it to have a distance. So in the dialog, the pop, the uh, drop down, or even up in the dashboard, or, or I should say the, <clears throat> the ribbon, I can go and I can select distance. Now the, the little drag handle here is available. If I rotate this around a little bit, you'll see that I want it to go, let's say, to a half an inch. Maybe I only want it to go to a quarter inch. Of course, I can type it in too by double clicking and typing in what I want for my distance. So middle mouse button completes that. Control D will put it back into triometric. And if we go over to the book, see if there's anything else I didn't really cover. <clears throat> Looks like pretty much is ever done. And if you want to change the way it looks, shading with edges works very well. If you want to get a little fancier, you can do shading with reflections, which is pretty much useless in design mode. Shading will not shade the edges or highlight them, but the one with the most definition is shading with edges. There might be times when you want hidden line, not in this case. Wireframe, you seldom work in wireframe, if ever. But this one shows the best. And if we want to turn everything back on as far as our datum planes, we can select here. Control D to put it back into the centered position of the screen. Control S to save it. It's the first save. Therefore, it's going to show my save object dialog box. Click on OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's complete. And I'm going to close that one. And this concludes lesson one, part three.